Hi, and welcome to First Bite, a nation's restaurant news podcast. I'm your host, Holly Petrie. Today is Tuesday, November 29th, and here are your top stories. First, Jack in the Box opens off-premises only unit in Q4. Tulsa, Oklahoma drive through restaurant is part of the brand's effort to update guest touch points. Second, McDonald's steps up its SMS marketing efforts. The company released a phone number via its social media channels for customers to opt into new SMS campaign. Third, Menu Tracker. New items from Del Taco, IHOP, and P.F. Chang's. See what chains across the country added to menus this week. Fourth, how Little Caesars is leveraging tech investment and development to gain a foothold in the pizza wars. Little Caesars Chief Development Officer Jeremy Vitaro on the importance of tech innovation, launching the NFL partnership, and future growth plans. And finally, as labor shortage drags on, employers can find long-term solutions overseas. Employers can no longer wait for workers to come to them. Now let's dive deeper into a trending story from the website. Adam Goldberg grew up on a huge rock and roll fan with a Kiss poster in his bedroom wall. So it's a bit poetic that he is now the CEO of Rock and Brews, a casual dining chain founded in 2012 by Kiss's flashy frontmen, Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons, among others. Goldberg, a restaurant veteran who co-founded Fresh Brothers Pizza, took the helm four years ago. He just so happened to live down the street from the Rock and Brews headquarters in California and knew the founding partners well including Michael Zislis and Dave and Del Ferrano. Through community outreach efforts, both of their restaurant brands facilitated. When Rock and Bruce hit some stumbles, including a franchisee's bankruptcy, the partners asked Goldberg to look at the books, and he's been running the company ever since. It wasn't necessarily the plan he anticipated, but there is some serendipity at play he couldn't ignore. The rock and roll, the location, the familiar faces, and the restaurant industry. Learn more about the concept and its plans for growth in the years ahead from Alicia Kelso. So Rock and Brews is this really interesting concept, and it was founded by a, a group of a group of guys back in 2012. And two of those guys uh, were Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons. And uh, I might be showing my age here, but they're the flashy front men for Kiss, which is one of the legendary all time, you know, rock bands of uh, you know, of all time, in my opinion. Uh, so, and, uh, again, it's, it's just a 10 year old concept, um, that, uh, uh, California based, um, very much experiential type of dining concept, family friendly. Uh, I know that, you know, most of the locations, you know, like allow dogs to come. They have these cool outdoor spaces that, that were turned into sort of beer garden spaces during COVID. Uh, so again, just a very much of an experience uh, driven casual dining concept that uh, focuses on beer um, and, you know, a typical bar menu. Now, experiential dining was really hard during COVID for obvious reasons. Um, so, I mean, but they have some plans for growth. What What is yes. Rock and Brew's plan for growth? I mean, they want to grow. Yeah. I, Holly, I think that's why I got so excited. Like, I, let me just preface this. So I, I had this conversation with Adam Goldberg um, during a recent trip to Las Vegas. And Adam Goldberg, I have known for over 10 years um, he and his brother started Fresh Brothers Pizza, another California-based co- uh, concept. Uh, his wife was the chief marketing officer, just really, really savvy restaurant operators. Um, and I remember covering Fresh Brothers Pizza and just being kind of in awe of what they were doing. That was so far ahead of uh, its time. Um, you know, like back in 2014, for example, they would um, they would uh, trigger uh, delivery. Um, where when the traffic was uh, it, it wasn't it wasn't great to, uh, in California because Los Angeles is obviously high volume traffic, so they would trigger traffic um, to to switch back and forth based on uh, which stores had uh, you know the 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 easiest traffic routes in uh, peak hours. And it, essentially what that came, there was no, um, there was no restaurant there, but they had a third address where people ordered from. So essentially what they did was they had a, a, a virtual or a ghost kitchen rather before ghost kitchens were even a thing um, because they just were trying to get the delivery there in time. So, you know, w- when I talk about, he's been in the industry for forever and he was friends with these guys and the concept, you know, it's a 
a cool concept on paper because, you know, they, they, it's got this rock and roll thing. It's not just about Kiss, but it's rock and roll. It's like a hard rock cafe kind of. Um, and yes, it was hit really, really hard during the pandemic. And, and uh, you know, this company had a, a, a franchisee that went through bankruptcy um, a, a few years ago before the pandemic. Um, but when Adam came on board, he sort of reined in everything and, and you know, uh, put the brakes on some of their their GNA spending and um, got the, the bankrupt uh, fr- franchisee healthy again uh, and sort of positioned it so that when we came out of the throes of the pandemic, if you will, would be positioned better. And that's exactly where I think they are right now. Um, and what excites me again about this concept, other than Adam's uh, dexterous um, experience, is just the sheer um, demand that we have right now for experiences. Um, you know, the, the the National Restaurant Association came out about a week and a half ago with their 2023, some of their 2023 menu guidance, and 70% of um, consumers say they want to go to a restaurant. They are they have so much pent up demand for going to a restaurant. If you factor that in with you know, concerts at an all-time high, um, you know, travel right now is at an all-time high. Casinos uh, just had a pretty successful round of earnings. We're, it, it seems like two years of not being able to do stuff is two years too long for the American consumer. And this is a good concept to be in that type of environment because, again, it's family-friendly, it's rock and roll, um, you know, it, it, it's an experiential dining type of place. Um, Adam has made some changes, too, to make it even more so. He's uh, he, he moved from just rock and roll to rock and roll and sports. Um, so, you know, half of the restaurant is for those people who want to listen to classic rock. The other half is people who want to watch the game. Um, and, and, you know, that's really smart. He wants to add more live music. Uh, to sort of get that diet, that dinner crowd to linger into late night. Um, but what really is intriguing to me uh, is uh, as part of their growth plan um, is that they are targeting casinos. And I just can't think off the top of my head of any restaurant concept that is uh, targeting, explicitly targeting casinos uh, the way that they are. They've got a couple of casinos in their roster already, and they're, they're wildly successful. Adam basically said, I wouldn't be targeting them if they weren't successful, which is, you know, point taken. Um, but, you know, it just seems uh, like a like a smart differentiator uh, to move into these casinos and, 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 and sort of a um, a mutual benefit kind of way. The casino benefits from having a flagship brand there, um, and and the restaurant benefits from captured traffic of uh, you know people who go uh, to casinos and and say oh, you know I, I got to get a bite to eat. This looks like a fun place. So uh, in my opinion, it seems pretty ripe for growth, um, and it'll be interesting to see how how that transpires. Thanks for listening to today's episode of First Bite. We'll be back tomorrow with a brand new one. Until then, stay up to date with all your news on NRN.com.